uh, in, in, in uh, with, for example, in this case, between horizontal, three photons, horizontal and vertical polarizations, the quantum, uh, big, uh, a local wheel is predicted that in such states only these correlations can exist for the three photons, on the three correlations, quantum mechanics predict just the opposite, and they expand it and first have to think on uncertainty, within experimental certainty, it is possible. But the point now is that these states are have become a question in also in discussions of uh, of uh, uh, quantum, uh, sorry, in, in the development of quantum information tasks, quantum uh, computation, etc. Uh, I now want to ask, I just, I just uh, showed you in principle how you can go, this was the idea again, how you can go to multi particles by simply, uh, simply adding uh, in this case, we have two sources, but we can have also more sources, and we erase in a proper way the information from which source the particle uh, comes, and we can have the input particle data. This is the basic idea. But the question now comes up how to go to higher dimensions. So far, we lived in all our experiments, which I mentioned, we will be together, you, the audience, and we, we lived in, in two dimensions of this. For example, by zero, one, by two, by two, by two, by two, etc., etc. Now, uh, one of the, uh, has, has, there, are two, there are two ways to, uh, two common ways to go to higher dimensions. Uh, one way, which I don't uh, go into detail here, is to use multiple beams. To so, so use, uh, 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 you know, like a photon, not just in the superposition of two, but three, four, five, six, seven, you name it. And, uh, uh, and it has been shown that this kind of entanglement they can be created also directly through this linear process of parametric calculation. Uh, a very elegant way is to use a uh, uh, donut box. Uh, 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 donut box has been, has been uh, a long over uh, their solution, their classical solutions to the macro equations, so they are only, I think it was 1996, I should have the you know, I'm sorry, this is another slide, by, by the book of Gartner in 1996, they were really discovered. Uh, they have a wave front, which is a screw, like I shown here, it should be a screw, and when you project the intensity, you get this kind of donut in the middle of the screw, the face of the round is long school, the multiples of two pi, so I think this is the axis of the school. Uh, multiples of two pi, they are point the same, but it's singularity. And the face singularity, and the last the dimension to the eyes will be straight to zero. Uh, and so when you project the intensity, you get these beautiful donuts here, and on the single singularity. And the interesting point is that depending on the you can have a different shape screw, uh, which means that classic between the phase goes around the year uh, once by two pi, or two times two pi, three times two pi, you name it, and so on. Okay? Now, uh, quantum mechanically, uh, this implies that uh, when you look, you can realize these states for a single focus. You realize in this state for a single photon, then a single photon can have carry either zero, it's called external angular momentum, or this angular momentum with respect to the propagation axis. There's either, in this case, either zero uh, angular momentum, or the original photon can carry besides the polarization, which is a completely independent variable. Uh, can carry plus or minus one h bar unit. These are the h bar units of regular momentum. But plus minus and two minus two and so on and so on. Up to arbitrary dimension. The generation is of this is just the way we seem to do it. We have a nonlinear medium the way I showed you before. And you create pairs. 
And uh, these two players are in, uh, are in two positions in these days. In principle, in principle, arbitrarily high in government, then some, some geometric factors and the will come in which uh, limit magnitude. But anyway, this way uh, uh, we can, we can uh, create, number one, we can create uh, 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 both with very, very high angular momentum. One experiment which shows uh, that photons can carry 10,000 uh, h by units of angular momentum in the future photon. And uh, this can be tangled in all, all these kinds of things. Here we get a picture of the, of the uh, various uh, modes which you can have. Okay, there is pictures. Various modes are very interesting properties of these modes. I, I don't want to go into details. It is clear that uh, uh, this is the theory of freedom opens up new, new avenues in quantum information. Uh, uh, for example, if you have two photons defined in 10 dimensions, uh, then this, is, this gives you 10 to 24 different possibilities. And uh, uh, the same is with certain two photons and in certain two groups. So uh, there are scores of papers which which uh, talk about this this, uh, this this possibilities. Here is a picture of some of these uh, modes. Uh, they are what we call like the Gauss modes. Here is the Gaussian mode that uh, with uh, one, two units, three units, and they are also also with internal uh, internal uh, 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 addition of the additional things which can be created. All this can be created by transmission of two phase plates uh, as shown here transmission of two. Now this opens up the possibility to higher dimensions. Here now I come to some very recent experiments in uh, 2018, uh, that is shown uh, uh, in the higher, for a higher years, here's the standard uh, street part in the state for, for two uh, cupids, uh, which has various, various uh, applications, as mentioned here. Uh, 
which towards the angular momentum uh, nodes, not just like, like polarization field for horizontal and vertical, but in this case, it sorts it according to you and all directly uh, uh, the, the support of the human state. Which is nice, but it creates a state where where it gets defeated here. Yeah. Uh, but it also gets states which are pyramids, which are not in the TSS state. And that is very important. This is a challenge. And the challenge was, was made by a computer program which was written by my former student, uh, he is now in, in Toronto, uh, uh, Michael Grain, who simply said, if we are sitting together, it was very difficult to design the scheme with additional beam splitters and so on and so on, which gets rid of this gap. Okay? So he designed a computer program which takes it in full or very full and let the computer uh, search for possible experimental utilization. And the interesting feature is, which I want to mention, is that the computer certainly found solutions, found also new ways to look at quantum physics. But I think uh, the interesting part is that there are a number of solutions which computers found are solutions which a human, I claim, would never have found, because they, the best solutions do not affect the symmetry of the state. Like the symmetry here of the state implies that. Uh, if the symmetry between 0 and 1 and 2. And uh, it implies every human consider it important that the setup should also respect the symmetry. But this is not the case. The best setup do not affect the, uh, the symmetry at all. Here is a realization. I don't want, I, I cannot go into the details here. Uh, it's, a comp it's a complicated setup. We have here a, 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 a uh, for high brightness, for the tensional source, and uh, we have here the generalization, the generalization of of the beam splitter to what is called the multi-core device, three input, three output, instead of before two inputs, two outputs, but the schemes are then both. I think I should not go into the details here. But what is done is to get rid of the unwanted cross products. Now this experiment was really a tour de force performed by Manuel Gerard in my, in my group. Uh, ah, there are now 21, we can say, already uh, three to the top. Uh, here is again uh, a mailing solution. That's the idea of that this is mailing solution, which uh, where we actually uh, uh, the end came up not with zero, zero plus one, one plus two, but with this state, uh, which is also a, a, a chip set. Right? Two, zero, zero, minus one, minus one, minus one, three, one, 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 which are the orbital angular uh, momentum sets. Uh, the experimental result is just a density uh, gap uh, from our measurements. I don't think that I should go into. Uh, too much to uh, A similar experiment that one uh, more recently was the teleportation of a three dimensional state. The teleport now, the challenge is to teleport now this state, okay, and not just the two dimensional state. You see, the teleport is being And the point simply is that you have to create. Additionally, you have to create a three dimensional integrated source, which is, which is nice, but you also have to operate now with incendiary photons here and here, which is absolutely not, not trivial and is not foreseen in the early experiments. But now, what you know, what is the fun of the laboratory of the GLB fund, for the by us, you can see Manuel Yahad. To work on my truth, to work with me, and to get the rest of us to be repeating the trust limit. Okay, now I would like to come to another issue, which is, which is also fundamentally very interesting, and like the other ones which I talked about, 
uh, is, is getting more and more in every case of important information that uh, science. This is a, 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 a picture, uh, a, a, a paper published in 1991, it's a long time ago, it's about 30 years ago, really. uh, uh, by Zhu Bank and Mango. Mango has a famous laboratory in Rochester, which produced many uh, uh, results on fundamental properties, uh, mainly of entangled states, but not only. Uh, you also did famous experiments uh, about, about, for example, the undesirability uh, in some cases that you cannot tell from which source the photon came from and, and likewise. For me, it was one of the great experimental pioneers. Now, this is one of the, one of the experiments which uh, uh, we found extremely interesting. In the paper in Felix today, 1993, a colleague by the Hall and myself called this a mind problem experiment. Uh, the idea was the idea of Chef Wu, uh, but he was not a, a co of uh, the experiment uh, itself. The idea is simply that you take two modeling crystals and grind them up, start with one photon produced here, propagates back through the second crystal, and you, you do it in such a way that they look <laughs> We can tell whether we open him from here or here. Now, I go a little bit into the details. You have a pump, you create a single pair here, okay? Maybe different colors, so for the, uh, uh, some other uh, possibilities. And you have here a second crystal, which also can be created here. And I should say to you that we create only one pair. We create one pair in the superposition of the here. Uh, strictly speaking, there are higher emissions, but in global technology, we can be more than Now, if, if, you, if you can, you can have a here a base shift, and if you change the base, you look at the output here, you can distribute, certainly you know it's coming. But uh, uh, why do you get more the film? Because these two beams, and it can be used to find out whether the pair was created here or it was created here. And if it was created, then you have part information, you should get no information. Just as I said in the beginning. But now, if you line this system up such a way that, that uh, the two modes are completely distinguishable, this photon enters here, comes out here, or uh, on the here, the boat here you cannot tell by no measurement what ever you do here, whether it came from here or from here. And then you must get the book Because now the two sources are indistinguishable. And lo and behold, you get the clear certification. It's seen by by measure. And you don't even have to measure this part, it's not big for you. No, you have you don't need to have any information. Uh, this can be used, for example, I mentioned a possible application. Uh, it can be used by inserting objects here, which influence either the amplitude, uh, which influence amplitude here. So if you reduce the amplitude here, uh, and it passes through, then you know that the photon has a higher come from here than from here. If you absorb completely, then you can only come from here, you get only the field. If you have reduced it a little bit, then you that you get some interference, but you have to lower the view. And to put the, then you can put the camera in here, and you can take an image without the photon detected by the camera ever having interacted, uh, ever having interacted with the camera. But the, the, the photon which has to interact with the object. This is now expanded in a research program by Sven Ramelow, who shows that you can do, can do this picture are taking images of biological objects to hear produce radiation, uh, uh, now in, in, in the long wavelength radiation, for example, even uh, we call it what the microwaves, which do not which do not destroy the biological objects. But you get the image here in the wavelengths where you have very good cameras. So this is a very interesting development for this, for example. But let me cut back uh, to fundamental uh, 
issues, this will not become the last part of my talk. Merz, 
Well, I did not say that uh, the LP cannot be described as the quantum state. So therefore, I thank you for your reply to the question, because this can actually be a misunderstanding. Uh, uh, concerning uh, the, the quantum uh, states, uh, my viewpoint is, is very much that of Heisenberg. Uh, he said that the quantum states are a representation of our knowledge. They are the representation of our knowledge of part the situation, and therefore they are real in a certain sense. But, uh, but uh, the point is, uh, they do not, they do not always describe uh, real. They describe uh, the possibility, the possibilities of experimental results. So the experimental result is certainly real. This is my position because in the lab I can see it. You know, but this is a, this is a, uh, 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 this is something that we all can agree upon, uh, that we have this sort of result now. Uh, they describe um, a possible experimental results, and, and all possible experimental results, uh, most of them only with quality. So in that sense, they describe potential, uh, they describe a reality, namely the reality of the apparatus which has been built up. The apparatus sits there, and we have all the knowledge about the apparatus. We know how, how it performed earlier, we know what the laser does, we know what the beam splitter does, the detector does, and so on. And based on that knowledge, we can write, to write down a constant, which is a catalog of all possible future results, and no more. And I highly care about the test and the, the measurement process where we have to change the quantum state, just the simple case, as I mentioned before, uh, with the beam spread, or even with the terrace experiment. Right? Uh, the measurement process means that we, have, we get an update of information, we get new information, and therefore we have to change the quantum state. And what would be more natural than to change the quantum state upon new information uh, 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 this, is just, uh, this, is, this is, so to speak, the representation of our knowledge. And, the, and, and what we have learned now, the maximum knowledge we can have. We have some other other things we, we cannot uh, know have more information than what is represented by the quantum state. Thank you. Well, I'm there other questions? From anybody in the uh, anybody in the lecture hall <coughs> or uh, anybody who's joined online. Unmuted. Yeah. Yeah. Unmuted. So, uh, uh, so since I don't think the people might have some facing some difficulties in connecting at this moment, so I should formally begin my vote of thanks for this whole session. Well, first and foremost, I would like to, I mean, thank uh, Professor Zeilinger, and it will be immense pleasure to thank him again for such a wonderful lecture. Well, Professor Anton Zeilinger is an institution in himself, and for those of you young students who are probably who have got into science much later, I should mention that he has been an institution for three decades now. When I actually started studying this subject more than 25 years ago, one of the first papers that I got, in, got across was the paper of the states, and you have seen during this talk that this paper hasn't yet a lot lost relevance. On the other hand, it has even become more relevant even after 30 years. So the GHZ states and GHZ theorem was a pioneering contribution of Zeilinger. And of course, Zeilinger's contribution didn't end there, and it took two very, I, I, I should say, different uh, colors, one on the side of application, the other on the side of foundations. In the application side, Zeilinger first uh, performed the experimental dense coding in 1996, and this was soon followed by a group performing the first 
demonstration of quantum teleportation. Then came the entanglement swapping, first entanglement swapping experiment in 1998, the quantum cryptography with entangled photons in 2000. Again, the first experiment on one-way quantum computation in 2005, blind quantum computing in 2012. And on the other hand, on the side of foundations, of course, there was the first demonstration of uh, a loophole-free well inequality test, which closed the communication loophole in, uh, for well inequality. That came from Gladinger's group in 1998. Then the quantum interference of macromolecules, which Professor Zeilinger briefly alluded to in his talk, came in 1999. And this actually has to do with uh, I mean, a collaboration or a related merger of ideas with uh, Professor Legge's work, and not only on macromolecules, but also Legge's work on crypto non locality that was first demonstrated by Professor Zeilinger's group in 2007. And in 2011 came the demonstration of quantum contextuality. So Professor Zeilinger has many firsts to his credit, and it would be too much for me actually to actually discuss all these first. But nevertheless, before ending, any description of Professor Zeilinger's work will not be complete without mentioning the work that he did during his uh, PhD times on neutron interferometry in Professor Helmut Rauch's group. So uh, it shows what a versatile uh, set of skills Professor Zeilinger has actually inculcated over the years. And personally, it gives me another uh, great pleasure to mention that we have had the privilege of hosting Professor Helmut Rao at the SMO Center twice. And I would request Professor Zeilinger that when the situation improves, that he could also perhaps sometime visit our center, SMO Center, maybe during one of his uh, visits to these parts of the world. So thank you again, Professor Zeilinger, very much for a wonderful talk. Uh, thank you. I would like to thank you again for your hospitality. I am very glad that you mentioned Professor Rao. Uh, he was really one of the pioneers of the whole field of quantum uh, uh, information. Some of the some of the key he realized with Newton have actually now become relevant for, for quantum information. It's very interesting. I can I could uh, list this, but uh, 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 it's, it's absolute, absolutely and at that time uh, I should say that uh, uh, the scientific community was not very open to such fundamental uh, work because quantum mechanics was considered to be understood. Well, it is understood, but in a sense, you know, and nobody had the feeling that this would lead to, would lead to uh, such an interesting technological application. In any case, I thank you very much for your uh, invitation, and I, I sure hope that the situation will change and I can follow up with that. Thank you very much. And I should also mention, particularly also for the younger participants, if you have questions, uh, you can send me an email. I showed you the email in the beginning, but you also can find it on the internet easily. Just send me an email. I, I cannot answer everything immediately, but I will try to reply. Thank you very much, and again, happy to be here. Thank you so much. Happy to be here. So, so next, I would uh, I have great pleasure in uh, thanking Professor B.N. Jakta, who is the chairman of the governing body of the SMO's National Center for Basic Sciences. And uh, today, of course, is 1st January, and Professor Jaktap has tremendous other responsibilities. So we are extremely grateful for, to him for sparing his time on such an occasion and actually giving an inspiring opening presentation. And it should augur well for our progress during the current year that uh, we should, I think, the center can play some role in the development of quantum science and technology. And I, again, thank Professor B. and Jaktap for his inspiring address. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. And uh, the, the, the last but not the least, I should thank my director, Professor S.K. Ray, for actually giving us this opportunity to organize such events. And not only that, there, there, I should relate to you a history of this, because this year has been a difficult one for all of us. And Professor Ray was one of the first persons who actually inspired us or spurred us to come out of the lockdown mode and start our activities in the center. So when the unlock phase started, we were more equipped to actually carry out our further research activities. So thank you once again, Professor Ray, 
for your uh, refined encouragement and enthusiasm. And uh, finally, I should mention that this talk is again, as it was mentioned at the beginning, that this talk is part of the DST Golden Jubilee celebrations, and DST has highly included it in their charter for the month of January. So I should like to thank the Department of Science and Technology and acknowledge the support provided by them. And also Vidyan Prasad, who have actually very painstakingly made an effort to spread out, to circulate this lecture among wide audiences to electronic media and other channels. So thanks to both DST and Vidyan Prasad. And uh, before we break for a short key interval, I should like to remind you all of those who are online that we have another presentation at 4.30, that is about 45 minutes from now, by Dr. Rajinder Singh, which also promises to be a very interesting presentation, and I should like to thank him in anticipation. So thank you very much, and we wait for tea now. We come back in 45 minutes. Thank you.